Up first this evening, in a bizarre turn of events, a police constable and the controversial leader of the Pathways International Ministries, Kevin Smith, are dead. The two died in a car crash in Linston St. Catherine about 9.30 today. Two other police officers were, who were in the vehicle transporting Smith were injured and are in critical condition. Now, we'll get to that story with Kirk in just a moment. But as a matter of fact, we'll do that story right now. Chaos in the immediate aftermath of the crash. Somebody gone. The officers were taking Kevin Smith, lead of the Pathways International Ministries, in an unmarked service vehicle to Kingston for him to be formally charged. Our information is that Smith and another suspect were to be charged with the death of two congregants at Smith's church two Sundays ago. The second suspect, who was being transported to face similar charges, was in another marked service vehicle that was piloting the vehicle carrying Smith and the policeman who died. This is dash cam video just before the accident. Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, head of the Police Communications Unit, CCU, says a detailed investigation is trying to find out how the accident happened. We're not sure exactly what transpired, apart from the fact that we know that the, the, the pilot vehicle indicated that the, they heard crashing sounds as they were traveling a convoy. And when they looked behind them, they saw the vehicle overturned and they went to the assistance of the officers where they realized the nature of the injuries and the ambulance came and took them to a hospital where they were pronounced dead. The police constable, who has been identified as Orlando Irons, was stationed in St. James. A motorist on the Linstead Bypass, where the accident happened, says the service vehicles were heading in the direction of Spanish Town when the accident happened. There was a police car marked and an unmarked one escorting, uh, I think it was Kevin Smith. The marked vehicle went through just fine, but the unmarked vehicle happened to hit a private vehicle going in the opposite direction and then spun in the middle of the road, hitting another vehicle coming from the opposite direction and went over into bushes. The eyewitness described what she said happened after the crash. There, there was four occupants in the vehicle, two police officers were at the front. They were both bleeding from the mouth and the nose. Two, the two persons at the back, one was a police officer and one was, I think, Kevin Smith. They were unconscious. Um, it took about an hour before they were taking out the vehicle because they had to be cut out by the fire truck. Um, to me, they, 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 they looked dead. The police communications arm responded to why the officers transporting Smith to Kingston from Montego Bay did not use the Edward Siaga Highway. So it happened on Church Street in the vicinity of the Linstead Bypass. Um, I'm not able to say why, w which route they took, but we know that um, there are several routes to Kingston and I'm sure they would have made the assessment and would have taken the route that they believe would be the, fa the, the safest route to get them there. Unfortunately, there was an accident that would have changed the whole dynamics of them getting from Montego Bay to Kingston safely. Shortly after the news broke that the accident happened, a large crowd converged here at the Spanish Town Hospital. Persons were asking about the pastor wanted to find out if he had passed. Now the family members of the policeman who also died in the crash came here. They describe him as a hardworking policeman who had six years service in the Jamaica Constabulary Force. This little young man is so brilliant. I mean, I remember when he was in the police force and he said, Auntie, I'm not staying in the police force, you know, going, sorry, the security force. And him saying, going into the police force because the security force now have nothing for offering. And I live in Kingston, they live in St. Anne, and every day as the process continues, he would call me, Auntie, I need to do my medical, I take him to Slipo, he would stay over at my house, we would pick him up, we would drop him off. When he's going to the embassy, he call me, Auntie, I'm coming up, and I'll pick him up because I'm the Kingston Auntie and they live in the country. Orlando is a great guy, a great father. The entire rank and file cohort we are mourning, by, and by extension the JCF. It's never an easy task, Kirk. To lose one of our members in such an unfortunate and tragic accident. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. In the meantime, attorney Valerie Nita Robertson is demanding answers from the police after the death of her client, Kevin Smith. She's now acting on behalf of Mr. Smith's family.
in an interview with our news center. She said she was not informed by the police that Mr. Smith was being transferred from St. James to Kingston. So there are questions about why didn't they take him before the parish court in the jurisdiction where they alleged the offenses were committed. And then there now they could ask for the voluntary bill to send it to the circuit court in the parish. Why are they carrying him to Kingston? Because any application to move the jurisdiction, I have to participate in that. You have to inform me, you have to file affidavits to say why you want it moved out of the parish of St. James. Everything that is happening is very curious and certainly not what usually happens. And the family is concerned about it. So I'm now acting for the estate. She says prior to the pastor's removal from St. James, she was kept in the dark on his whereabouts. She confirmed Smith was questioned by detectives on Saturday, and he later asked to be taken to the doctor as he was feeling a pain in his leg. Limping for several days, and we asked for him to be taken to the doctor. They asked him 40 questions, which he didn't answer, and that ended there. So we, this morning now, when we are trying to contact him to speak to him on behalf of his family, he's not in custody. So Mr. McCurdy called the investigating officer. He wasn't answering. And he called the superintendent in charge of the area. I think it's area two. And he said he didn't know where he was. So that's when I put out a press release asking where's the gentleman because this is the second time that they have taken him and they have not spoken with us and informed us. And they have both of us. They have our, 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 our phone numbers. She says Mr. Smith's family intends to hire an independent pathologist for the autopsy.